If you are training like this, you are headed for disability or potentially even worse. In this video, we'll uncover four extremely prevalent yet seriously flawed exercise approaches. This is your wake up call to help you stay out of the orthopedic surgeon's office. After I give you a comprehensive overview of these common errors, I'll show you exactly how to avoid them so you can enjoy a longer, healthier, and more fulfilling life. Be sure to watch the entire video to discover the simple changes you can make that might just save you from spending the last years of your life in a nursing home. So many people are living under the false assumption that just because they do some form of exercise that they won't end up just like their parents or grandparents that are sadly withering away in an assisted living facility unable to perform even the most basic movements without help. I'm here to burst that bubble. Apologies in advance. The good news? Not only will I shatter some of those false beliefs and identify common mistakes, but I'll provide some solutions to help you take your training to the next level and do everything in your power to minimize your risk of disability and maximize your health span. And now, the four most common exercise mistakes that actually increase our risk of disability as we age. Future nursing home patient number one, the cardio only exerciser. Jogging, cycling, hiking, rowing, etc. are all great ways to improve the health of our cardiovascular system and provide real benefits to your heart, lungs, and blood vessels. But these activities do not build muscle and do little to nothing to help maintain the flexibility and stability needed to live a high-quality life free from disability. Like it or not, your quality of life and your risk of becoming disabled is directly connected to your strength and muscle mass. The sad reality is that we will all naturally lose muscle mass and strength as we age. Starting at age 30, on average, we lose 1-2% to 2 of our strength every year. So by the time we hit 70, we have 50% of the strength that we did at age 30. Making matters worse, this rate of decline increases as we age and accelerates intensely around age 60. If you haven't built significant strength and muscle mass by 60, you're almost certain to experience significant loss of mobility and a decreased quality of life. Think of this as saving for retirement. The earlier you start, the better. If you're in your 30s, 40s, or 50s and haven't saved a dime for retirement, you better start saving aggressively. Similarly, if you're in your 30s, 40s, or 50s and haven't started building a strong, muscular, flexible, and athletic body, you better start training aggressively but also intelligently, because you cannot afford to get injured at this point and be forced to sit on the sidelines for weeks or months to recover. Additionally, doing cardio only can create excessive wear and tear on your joints. Having low muscle mass and damaged joints is a recipe for disaster. I know way too many people that made this mistake in their 30s and 40s and are now in their 50s and 60s suffering the consequences with chronic pain and loss of mobility. Don't make this same mistake yourself. On to future nursing home patient number two, the walker. Now, don't get me wrong. Walking is great for maintaining basic human functioning, but unfortunately, similarly to doing cardio only, it does not build strength or muscle or improve flexibility or mobility. I meet people all the time that proudly share the number of steps they walk each day and wrongly believe that all this walking will keep them young and free from the confines of an assisted living facility. While I applaud this effort and strongly believe that walking is a very powerful tool to have in our toolkit to help maximize our health spans, sadly, no matter how frequent or far you walk, Walking just simply is not sufficiently rigorous to stimulate any gains in strength or muscle mass. Is walking 10,000 plus steps a day good for you? Of course. Is it better than sitting on your ass all day and night? Absolutely. But is it enough to keep you strong enough to live a high quality of life in your 60s, 70s, and beyond? Sadly, no. The truth, walking shouldn't even be considered exercise. And among serious exercise scientists, it isn't. Hitting a minimum of eight to 12,000 steps a day should be part of everyone's everyday life as the minimum dose of simply not being a lazy piece of shit. However, if you wanna live a high quality of life when you reach the stage when you were lovingly referred to as grandpa, then walking alone isn't going to cut it. All the same cautions from our future nursing home patient number one, the cardio only exerciser apply here as well. While walking is generally safer on your joints than running, it fails to provide the significant benefits to your cardiovascular system as higher intensity forms of endurance training. 
Bottom line, walking is great, but if that's your main form of exercise, you're likely walking yourself right into the nursing home. And please don't fall for the common misconception that walking and other forms of low-intensity cardio are the keys to losing fat. The truly effective strategies that are scientifically proven to lead to a reduction in body fat are as follows. Strength train to build muscle and in turn increase your resting metabolic rate. Don't consume more calories than you burn each day. Get 7 to 9 hours of sleep each night. Now more detailed information can be found on all these topics in some of my other videos, so be sure to subscribe to this channel. On to future nursing home patient number 3, the 2 pound dumbbell aficionado. This individual is either afraid to lift anything heavier than 5 pounds out of fear of injury, or they're afraid of getting big and bulky like some cover model bodybuilder. Here's the truth. Those guys and gals you see on the cover of fitness magazines are all some combination of genetic freaks, pharmacologically enhanced, and or photoshopped into looking bigger and bulkier than any of us mere mortals will ever get from simply hitting the gym 3-4 times a week. Here are some scientifically supported principles of strength training to consider. You need to lift a minimum of 30-40% to 40 of your 1 rep max in order to build strength or muscle mass when you lift. Your 1 rep max is your maximum weight you can lift for just one repetition. So if I put 100 pounds on your back and you can perform just one squat, then 100 pounds is your 1 rep max for that exercise. To build muscle and strength, then you need to squat with at least 30 to 40 pounds if you want to get any bigger or stronger. You need to perform a minimum of 5 sets per week per muscle just to maintain the strength and muscle mass you currently possess. And you need to perform a minimum of 10 to 20 sets per week per muscle to gain strength or muscle mass. And these need to be hard effort sets. To be most effective, we need to be within 1 to 3 reps from failure in order to stimulate gains in muscle. So, going to the gym once or twice a week and dancing around with 2 to 5 pound dumbbells simply isn't going to yield any sort of significant results. It is certainly not going to be sufficient in order to give you the sort of strength and conditioning you're going to need to live a high quality of life during those grandpa years. On to future nursing home patient number four, the lifelong lifting amateur. This character goes to the gym regularly, uses machines, and occasionally lifts actual weights, but doesn't really know what they're doing and has no idea if they're moving those weights around with appropriate form. I'm talking to you if there's a half a dozen or more exercises or machines in your gym that you're afraid to even attempt because just looking at them makes your back or neck or shoulders or hips or knees cry out in pain. If your joints are more sore than your muscles after spending an hour in the gym, this is for you. The truth is, unless you have an untreatable orthopedic issue, there is not a single natural human movement that you shouldn't be able to do without pain. Squatting, deadlifting, pulling, pushing, lunging, carrying heavy weights. These are all basic, fundamental movements that we need to be able to do if we want to live a high quality of life. Avoiding any of these fundamental movements only leads to the development or exacerbation of weaknesses and or injuries over time. If you never squat because it hurts to squat, the solution isn't avoiding squatting. Unless, of course, you're cool with eventually needing help to get up off the toilet, which is a movement that looks a whole lot like a squat, doesn't it? You need to figure out why it hurts when you squat, address those issues, and then find a squatting pattern you can perform without experiencing pain, and then strengthen your squat. This doesn't require any rocket surgery, I assure you, but it does require a plan and some deliberate effort. Now, I spent the better part of a decade being afraid to bend over the sink to spit out my toothpaste after brushing my teeth out of the fear of throwing my back out yet again. So I overstand the desire to avoid certain movements and to avoid experiencing pain. After I addressed the hip and core stability issues that were the underlying cause of my chronic back pain, and I learned how to deadlift properly, I was able to banish that back pain for good. And I've been fortunate to help countless clients follow a similar path to a pain-free life. So if you're experiencing pain during any fundamental human movement, get yourself in to see a physical therapist or other fitness professional. Find the exercises you need to be doing to build yourself back up to being able to move your body through a full range of motion. Don't just tell yourself, oh well, I guess I'm getting old. That's bullshit. 
I know 80 year olds still capable of lifting weights, competing in triathlons, hiking, skiing, and overall living a high quality of life. You deserve that too. But the truth is, you'll never get there yourself if you only do exercises you're comfortable doing. We must step out of our comfort zone to get meaningfully stronger. Building muscle is a physiologically expensive undertaking, and our bodies will only create new muscle tissue if a sufficiently challenging stimulus is applied. If you've comfortably done three sets of 10 reps of 200 pounds on a leg press for the last five or 10 years, continuing to press the same 200 pounds for three sets of 10 is not going to be a strong enough stress to stimulate your body to build new muscle or strength. That might be enough to maintain the muscle you have, but remember, we will all eventually lose muscle mass and strength as we age, so maintenance is not enough. You need to get as strong as possible now if you want to maintain a high quality of life as you get older. And never in the history of humanity has an 80-year-old ever complained that he or she wished they weren't so damn strong. Staying comfortable is simply not enough. Now don't take this message the wrong way. You should learn proper execution of any exercise before anything else. Doing some new exercise that you just saw on Instagram that makes you feel uncomfortable in a painful way is not the sort of discomfort you should or need to pursue. Increasing the difficulty of a variety of 10 to 20 exercises over many years is a proven way of building strength and muscle mass. We don't need to imitate some 25-year-old jacked on steroids who's trending on TikTok doing highly complex Olympic lifts. We must simply master the basics and then find ways beyond simply adding more weight to make them more challenging over time. Now be honest with yourself. Do any of these four characters I just described sound painfully familiar? Are you making any of these mistakes yourself? Good news. If you recall, I promised you solutions. Solution number one, incorporate sprints into your endurance training. So if you love to run, but also recognize the importance of building and maintaining strength, muscle mass, and power as you age, then you need to periodically increase the intensity. Now I'm not talking about simply running a mile as fast as you can here. You need to go full speed, an all-out sprint, at a velocity you could only sustain for 5 to 10 seconds. One simple and effective protocol to incorporate into your training here is to first warm up for 5 to 10 minutes with some light jogging, and then do a series of 10 second sprints at max effort, followed by 30 to 60 seconds of rest to recover. When I do these myself, I simply start a stopwatch. I sprint for 10 seconds and then walk the rest of the minute. Then sprint again for 10 seconds, and then walk the rest of that minute, and repeat for a minimum of 10 sprints, 10 minutes total. So you're sprinting for 10 seconds every minute on the minute. Then I cool down with 5 to 10 minutes of light jogging and call it a day. So if you're a runner that wants to maximize your longevity, this sort of sprint training should be done at least once a week. Cyclists, swimmers, etc. can all follow a similar protocol to stimulate some real gains in strength, muscle, and power. Now, real quick, before I share this next solution, please consider sending this video to someone you know that might benefit from this message. It's word of mouth referrals like this that go a long way to help me on my mission to help as many as I can live stronger, longer lives. I truly appreciate your support. Solution number two, you need to address flexibility and mobility regularly. Has it been years or even decades since you could touch your toes? Like me, do you know people that already struggle with the hip mobility required to put on and tie their shoes? Sadly, this isn't a joke. I've seen too many men in their 40s and 50s that need to sit down just to get their shoes on. This may or may not come as a surprise, but sitting at a desk for the majority of the day ain't all that good for you. Being in this fixed position for extended periods of time, day in, day out for years, absolutely wreaks havoc on your hip and spinal mobility. At least once an hour, you need to get out of that seated position, simply go for a five minute walk, bend over and touch your toes, stretch your hip flexors and quads, rock a horse stance for 30 seconds, play with a yoga pose or two, variety is key. Beyond that, we need to spend five to 10 minutes working to improve our mobility before we start any workout, whether that's going for a run, playing tennis or basketball, and definitely before we pick up any weights in the gym. Address mobility first. 
Trying to build strength on top of a stiff and inflexible body will only serve to make that stiffness and inflexibility more permanent. For a free daily mobility program, go to yourmaxhealthspan.com or simply click the link in the pinned comment below. Solution number three. If walking is your thing, invest in a solid rucksack you can load up with weights. GoRuck.com, with whom I have no affiliation, makes comfortable and very high-quality rucksacks that effectively turn your walking routine into a muscle-building activity. Now, two notes of caution here. Number one, make sure you start off with a very light weight, 5 to 20 pounds max here. And go ahead and cut your regular walking distance by anywhere between 50 and 75% to give your body time to adjust to the extra challenge of walking with a weighted sack on your back. And second, if you have any significant biomechanical flaws in your gait, adding weight will just shine a spotlight on those disordered movement patterns and cause pain and potentially injury. You need to address the mobility restrictions and or weaknesses that are causing those flawed movement patterns before adding weight to your walks. Finally, and most importantly, solution number four, if you are serious about maximizing your health span, minimizing your risk of disability, and drastically reducing your chances of ever ending up in a nursing home, you need to incorporate a serious strength training program into your lifestyle. This doesn't need to be as complicated as many make it out to be. This is my full-time job, but that doesn't mean it has to be yours. We need to simply master a decent mix of exercises, 10 to 20 will do, that cover all basic human movements, squatting, hinging at the hips, pushing, pulling, lunging, and carrying. Learn how to properly execute these movements in a way that maximizes the stress on your muscles and minimizes the stress on your joints. Progressively make them harder over time and you will get stronger, guaranteed. To live the highest quality of life possible demands a significant amount of strength and muscle mass, and consistent strength training is by far the most efficient path to achieve that goal. That is why safe and effective strength training is the absolute pillar of the Maximum Health Span program. Now you can do all of this on your own. And I have several videos in the works that'll show you step by step how to build a stronger and more capable body while simultaneously minimizing your risk of injury. So if you've made it this far in the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Now, if you'd like me and my team to personally guide you on this journey, go to yourmaxhealthspan.com or simply click the link below.